Major Slack Attack. Boy, yeah, the name is Slack. Thanks for coming back. Let's walk through some more Elden Ring playing as a samurai. And so I'm assuming everybody watched part one. You got the basic game mechanics down. So now I want you to all fasten your seatbelts and make sure your tray tables are in the upright locked position because we are going to fly. As you can tell by the title, we're going to cover a lot of ground in this video. In fact, I couldn't even fit everything that we're going to be doing in this video in the title. Um, yeah. We need a doggy buster. We're going to Groveside Cave eventually to take down the boss there. Uh, but we need a doggy buster because the Groveside Cave is full of wolves. And in fact, the entire game is full of wolves. We're going to be dealing with wolves and wild dogs all over the place. And Uchi Katana is not a good doggy buster. Um, the skill? You have to have really quick reflexes to be dealing with the wolves with this. Um, I don't expect everybody to have reflexes enough to do that. There is a much easier solution, and that is found in the rapier. And the rapier we can find in the round table hold. So we have to get to the round table hold. Let's get underway. We're going to go to Agil Lake North to start off with. Going to go on a little run to get to the round table hold. The round table hold is basically a central hub, a central marketplace, if you will, for the lands between. All right, in here, let's wait till daytime. Okay, it doesn't matter what weapon you have, because we're just going to go for a little horse ride. Point to the northeast. Gallop up here, past all these swords here. And then you're going to turn to the right a bit and go to the right of those ruins over there. There's an enemy camp there. We're just going to kind of speed run through the camp. Come up here. Double jump over here. And right here, pick up the Armorer's Cookbook number one. Once you got that, get your butt out of that camp. And you're aiming for that, see that white wolf on top of those uh, rocks there? Aim right for him, and there is a golden rune rank 2 there. Once you've got that, aim for these trees here. And you see that statue right there? That's what you're looking for. Go to the right of the statue, you're going to see this, this kind of like this wind stuff. This is a spirit spring. This is for the horse. You can use these to jump really high. Okay, you get on these and then you press the jump button and you go really, really high. And you can also use them in reverse. If you jump on top of them, they prevent you from taking fall damage. So that's what we're going to use to get across this canyon here, okay? Let's jump over. And it prevents you from taking fall damage. Once you're down here, make sure you're pointing this way to the east. And double jump. Well, just jump and you fly really high and push forward. And we're going to land right here like that. And here, right ahead is the artist shack the artist shack has a smithing stone right here and you want to go inside and check this out this painting here the homing instinct painting if you go into your inventory and go to info you're going to see this basically this is an artist painting what you're required to do is find the location where this painting was made at that location you're going to get as um, a reward and the reward for this is a helmet that we probably won't use but um we'll go get that later but that's not a priority all right so that's the way that works out oh, here he's the site of grace mode to make sure you discover this because we want to come back here later on okay having done all that Push to the east to the edge of the cliff. Watch it now, watch it now. And there is the third church of America. That's where we're going. But we gotta get off this cliff. So let's ride around here. Follow the cliff around here. And this is a safe jump, of course and then push our way down and you're looking for that graveyard right there dead ahead tons of money there whole bunch of golden runes here do not cash any of them in you want to keep 
No money in our inventory, all right? So collect all these golden runes. And there's also a very important cookbook here. Fever or Fever? I didn't really look up how to pronounce it. I'm going to go with Fever. Fever's cookbook number one. Okay, so make a good look around. Make sure you got all the golden runes. And we have some new recipes. If you go to item crafting, the previous cookbook that we picked up, the Armorer's cookbook number one, allows us to make fire grease and drawstring fire grease. And the cookbook that we just picked up, Fever's cookbook, this will allow us to make sleep pots. This is very, very important. All right? Don't have the ingredients to make that now. Well, actually, you can make some fire grease, but it's not really relevant. All right, so having done that, you got all the money. Do not cash in. Horsey up and running. Dead ahead, where my Sawyer sword is pointing, is the Third Church of America. That drop off this cliff is too dangerous. So let's make our way up the cliff here. Right about here. And you're looking for that step there. You bring up your bow. And we're going to do in this dragonfly. Down he goes. And you see we got to get down there. If you just kind of drop off, you're going to land on the edge of that one down there. You may even fall off. So I, su I suggest do a kind of like a running jump. And that's we're going to take a little bit of fall damage, but it's no biggie. You can survive. All right? That's no biggie. And just heal up if you feel a little nervous about that. Get up your horse, and now we're down. Here's the giant troll. Ignore him. Dead ahead is the third church of America. Some important items here at the Third Church of America. One is the Flask of Wondrous Physic. And a Crimson Crystal Tear. There we go. The Flask of Wondrous Physic. This is an extra flask that you can use once per rest. And over here is the Sacred Tear. Okay, having gotten those items, go over and discover the Sight of Grace. Rest at the Site of Grace, and you can see you have a new option. Mix Wondrous Physic. This is our new flask. You can use this once per rest. And you're going to get all kinds of what are known as crystal tiers that you can put in these two slots here to give yourself bonuses that you can use once per rest um, as you go out in the field. And right now, all we have is this one here, the Crimson Crystal Tier. Basically, it's an emergency health recovery. Restores half of your total HP in the mixed physic. And it's just like a regular flask. You can put it in your item roll. Here it is right there. And you can take it once per rest. Take it out in the field. There it's in the item roll and you can just use it like other flasks. Alright? Everybody done that? Next! I'm gonna jump to the northwest here and find this like this little swamp here. Okay? Showing the map where I am, just north of the Third Church of America. And go all the way to the end here and find this strange glowy thing here. Examine it and it asks you if you want to travel to another location. Agree. And this will take us to the Bestial Sanctum. Once we're here, you're going to see this guy right here. Leave him alone. Do not engage. He will kick your ass. Instead, go in here.
Dead Head is the death root guy. Bring him death roots and then give you rewards. I'll talk more about that later. But here's the set of grease that we want to activate. And then you want to rest. And at this point, you meet Melina again. Forgive me. I've been testing you to determine if the Elden Ring would truly have you. If you had the metal to endure this long and arduous path. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start, whereas I merely pretended. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the Round Table Hold. Oh, wonderful. Gathering place of tarnished champions, guided by grace. Okay, as long as they're guided by grace, otherwise it's, you know, it's no deal. <laughs> Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. And off to the round table hold we go. Lots to do there, but once again, I'm going to keep this on a need-to-know basis. All we are here for is the rapier. The rapier sword. And then explain why that's important um, momentarily. So once you're here, turn to the left. I'm going to go down this passage here. Turn to the right and go all the way down the steps here, all the way to the end and find the twin maiden husks. Okay, these these two right here. These are merchants. And they will have the rapier sword for 1,000 runes available. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cash in just enough runes to buy that sword. So look over here. We picked up these uh, golden runes here. These golden rune two. Each one is worth 400 runes. So let's cash them both in. You select it, boom, cash that in, and that'll give us 800 runes. And then you can go back and cash in a couple of golden rune rank one right here, however many you have. Okay, go to you selected and just select two, and that'll give you exactly 1,000 runes plus whatever chump change you have. Oops. <laughs> I did the math wrong. <laughs> I got extra. Anyways, there's no big deal. Cash in one. Okay, cash in one. I, was, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking about something else. Just cash in one because each one is worth 200 runes. And that will give you 1,000 runes. Exactly. And now we can purchase the rapier. Alright. Having done all that. Back to Groveside Cave. And we're going to do our our first boss fight. The most important item in Groveside Cave is a free cracked pot, which we use to make bombs. All right, so why do we go to all the trouble to get the rapier? Everybody, let's just take out the bow for now and equip the rapier. All right, that's the rapier. We're going to use that torch. Okay, and we're going to swap back and forth between the Uchi Katana and the Rapier. Now, with with wolves, you're not going to gun them down with the bow. They're just too skitterish. Once they get activated and they're running around, trying to shoot down a moving target with the bow is damn near impossible. You're not going to do it. So you're going to have to use your sword. And the Uchi Katana is a poor choice to be te dealing with wolves. Because if you got a shield up, every time you attack, he drops his shield. Okay? And if you want to use the Uchi Katana's skill, you have to have quick reflexes. You know, the wolves bopping around, and then when he comes at you, you use your skill. I mean, if you got quick enough reflexes to do that, all the power to you. But there's a much easier solution with the rapier. The rapier, when you have your shield up, you can stab while keep keeping the shield up like this. This is a fantastic doggy buster wild dogs wolves whatever they can't get through this defense and it's going to be even better when we get a better shield right now our shield is pretty crappy if you look at it as you can see it only does 68 physical damage negation we're going to get a shield shortly that does 100 physical damage negation but for now this will have to do but this is a great doggy buster all right so that's why we in all the trouble to get the rapier all right so now everybody wants you to get your bow ready to go and get the torch ready to go 
Okay, so you got your bow and your torch. Two-handed torch like this. This is a formidable weapon. If you press the skill button, or if you press the strong attack button, this does a lot of damage. As you can see, there we go. Right armament number three, that's how much damage it's doing. It actually outperforms our rapier. Right? This is what we're going to do. This is perfect because the tunnels are dark. We're going to run in down the dark, dark tunnel. Keep to the right. We're going to skip all the the enemies inside Groveside Cave and head straight for the boss fight. Because um, hopefully you didn't, um, you only spent, like used up 1,000 runes worth of golden runes. So you have like just a, bit, a little bit of chump change in your pocket right now. And when we go into that boss fight, if you screw up, all you're leaving behind is a little bit of chump change because if you try again, like I explained, you don't want to have to be burdened with going to pick up your money before you take on the boss again. Alright, so we're going to go straight for the boss. Stick to the right side. Stick to the right side. The torch will help light your way. There's going to be a wolf here. Target him. Skill. Instantly kill him. And down here. Ignore the pickups for now. And now we're going to get ready for the boss fight. Get your bow up and running. Get it ready to go. Make sure you got fire arrows in slot number one. And here's the procedure. We're going to go in, target him, and use Mighty Shot four times. At that point, we're going to run out of stamina. So you're going to count one steamboat and then do, then do a fifth Mighty Shot, and that'll finish him off. All right? And you'll probably take a little bit of a... Uh, you're going to have to stand in and take one for the team because by the time you get down to your fifth shot, he's going to be right up in your face. Just keep going with the plan. You're going to take one for the team. Take a little hit, but fire off that fifth shot, and it's going to finish him off. Let's do it. Target, mighty shot. One, two, three, four. One steamboat and no damage. But your mileage may vary. Like I said, it gets right up in your face. Don't worry about it. Take one for the team and fire off that fifth shot after you count one steamboat to let your stamina recharge. There you go, no damage boss fight. That guy is absolutely hellacious if you let him get underway. Absolutely hellacious, but I just showed an easy way to do him in. So that's it, and we have earned a thousand runes and our first talisman, which is just going to give us a little bit of fire protection. It's not really that useful. We're going to get a much better talisman shortly, maybe even before the end of this video. Having done that, let's fast travel back to the beginning. Now that boss will not respawn, so we can safely hit up this side of Grace here. Refill everything. And get ready for all the wolves inside. For this we're going to use... Don't need the torch, we're going to use primarily the bow. And the rapier. The rapier is just a backup plan. We're going to use mostly the bow and regular arrows. And we're going to try to gun down as many wolves as possible from a stealth archer stance. And if, let me just go up here to demonstrate. If your cover gets blown and they start coming at you, switch over to the rapier and your shield. Hold your shield up. They come at you, target them, stab them to death. It's that easy. All right. So that's the plan. Let's do it. We're going to sneak down all the way down and on the left side. Stick to the left. That guy is our first target. Lock on, mighty shot. Crouch, back away, wait. Wait for them to calm down. That big bad boy right there, he's like the alpha wolf. Wait for him to calm down. Okay, once he's calmed down, this guy is next right here, this little guy right here. Mighty shot. Crouch. Back away. Wait for them to calm down. The easiest way to take down these guys. 
There's the alpha wolf. And he calms down. Let's switch over to fire arrows. Same thing. Mighty shots, but it's going to take a couple of fire arrows. If he gets out of hand, it starts coming up here. Switch to your rapier and finish him off as he comes close. That's the plan. Let's do it. Target. And I hate when that happens. And he's down. Yeah, you got to get right close to the edge, otherwise there's a bit of a clipping problem. Okay, so that just leaves this guy here. Let's wait for him to calm down. We can switch over to our rapier and just just jump on him and do a strong attack. Jump, strong attack, and down the base. That didn't quite finish him off. Actually, the Yuchi Katana would have been better for that. It does more damage. And here's our crack pot. That's what we came here for. So now we can make all kinds of stuff. We can make fire pots, we can make sleep pots. Basically grenades. Alright, so over here we have two wolves left. Switch over to the bow. Use your regular arrows. And it's only one guy left. Let's switch over to our rapier. Get up close. Shield up. Down he goes. Alright, let's get some light on this subject. Two hand the sucker and let's go looting. Golden rune here. And some silver flyer fireflies here. Done and done. That only leaves one wolf over here. Same deal. Press the skill button or the strong attack button, that'll do him in. And that is this entire cave clear. We now, we now have a cracked bot, too. I think that calls for a Mr. Burns. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Burns. All right, let's get out of here. Next is Gatefront Runes. Go to Gatefront. Many important items here. Strike that. Before we do that, next is leveling up the bow because we have a ton of money now and we've done the boss fight so there's no um, de like danger of losing our money so let's cash in go to the church of Ella Won't you? well, you're back. and this is an easy way to cash in your runes just sell them you get the exact same amount as if you use them manually okay so sell them all And everybody should have upwards of 6,000 runes now. Goodbye. So now we're going to level up. Pile everything into dexterity. Level up. Dexterity. Should be able to get dexterity up to 22. Very good. And it's going to leave you some money left over. Don't worry about that. What we're going into is not really a high risk situation. Okay, so having done that, dexterity up to 22. Your bow is now powerful enough to one-shot the soldiers at the Gatefront Ruins, which is the most important thing. Instead of like wasting two arrows on all these guys, now we can just one-shot them. Now we can just breeze through Gatefront Ruins. Using the bow. And another weapon that we're going to acquire shortly. Alright. Wait till noon. Okay, in your weapon roll. We don't need the torch. We're going to use the bow. We don't really need the rapier. 
Um, actually, we do need it for now. Let's get rid of this shield, this shitty shield. Yeah, keep the rapier up for now. Okay, to start off with, this guy should be able to one-shot him. Might be shot. Down he goes. Up here. And we're going to acquire the Lord Sworn's Great Sword. Okay, now this requires strength 16. Now, while we're waiting for this guy here. Let me explain to you what's going on with this. The Lord Sworn's Great Sword requires, as you can see, 16 strength. We don't have 16 strength, but what happens when you two-hand a weapon, you increase your strength by 50%. So we have, by default, 12 strength. So increasing our strength by 50% is going to give us 18 strength. So we can use this weapon properly if we just simply two-hand it. So that's what we're going to do. Switch over to it. And two-hand it by pressing the action button the action button and the attack button and now we can use this just like a regular sword so what we're gonna do is this guy right here patrolling up and down he's the camps alarm you're gonna see on his right side see he's got that bugle if you alert him and you keep him alive he's gonna blow that bugle and the entire camp is gonna go apeshit and they're all gonna come at you at once so priority number one is to kill him quietly. So we're going to wait for him to come up to the end of his patrol here. We're going to sneak up behind him, do a backstab, and then we're going to go straight for that guy at the campfire there. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, let's make our move. Make sure you have the proper lock on. Okay. Crouch immediately. Go over here. Get behind this guy. Same deal. Lock on. Crouch immediately. Push up this way. Lock on, backstab. Switch over to your bow. Get it ready. Go up on this wagon here. This will give you enough height to target this guy. Mighty shot. Should be able to finish him off with one shot. There we go. No problem. Now, let's have some fun with the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. This thing here. As you can see, the skill is Stamp Upward Cut. So basically what happens is, I like to demonstrate it now, but I'm going to alert that guy over there. So we're just going to go and use it on him. Basically, you press the Skill button and then the Strong Attack button right afterwards. So let's just get him alerted. Tar lock on. Hey, buddy. Hello. And... Stamp. Uppercut. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> and as you saw, what happens is, these guys with swords, when you stamp... It puts you down low, and their sword swipe always misses you. And then you do the, the uppercut, stamp, uppercut, and you saw what happened. It's just a beautiful thing. Is that a beautiful thing or what? And this is just a rune fragment. It's not really that big of a deal. All right, so let's continue. Bring up your bow. Get it ready by pressing the attack button. And let's swing it around this side here. All right. This guy here, get up right about even with that, and mighty shot, target. All these guys are gonna gun down. Should be able to one shot everybody. Target that guy, the doggy. He's not moving around, so there's no problem. Target this doggy. And if that guy comes over, he wants to cooperate, maybe we can get him. No, he moved away. It's funny, you kill his two dogs and he doesn't really care. <laughs> He's like, oh well. <laughs> Ain't war hell. Okay, so we can get this guy at least. 
and let's just recharge our FP. Probably be wise to wait till this guy comes back so we don't make too much noise um, gunning him down. He's gonna come back. Here he comes, you see the, the torch. Lock on, mighty shot. And down he goes. Now you can switch over to your Lord Sworn's Greatsword, two-handed. And we just have this guy left. Lock on, get right up his butt. And for some reason the critical hit didn't activate. That occasionally happens when you don't position yourself just right behind the guy. Okay, so this whole side of the camp is down. Let's ride on down to the side of Grace here. This is just to position ourselves for the other side of the camp. Don't hit the side of Grace because what's, what's going to happen is that everybody at the camp will respawn. So we're going to swing it on around here to these bushes here. Get down here. Get into the bushes and we'll do a little recon see what's going on. Basically want to hit this guy here. The guy with the spear and the shield, he's the most dangerous guy. But if we can get right behind him, we can just do a backstab and he'll go down, no problem. Basically we want to wait though for this guy to come down, patrol here, and then go back. And then we're going to make our move. Smoke him if you got him. This could take a minute or two. And he's on his way back. Let's make our move. That guy right there, see where my sword's pointing? That's the boss of the camp. We're going to leave him for last. Yeah, let's wait for the other guy to get a fair distance away. And then we'll make our move on the spear guy. Like right about now. Lock on, get right behind him. Get right up his butt. Press the attack button. And you get a critical hit. Okay, now, this guy, he's just got a, a sword and no shield. So, he's a perfect candidate for the stamp uppercut. Hey, buddy. Over here. Come on now. You know you wanna. There we go. When he gets close, skill button, strong attack. <laughs> Is that a beautiful thing or what? <laughs> I gotta love it. You gotta love it. Same thing with this guy. He's just got a sword. So he's a perfect candidate for the stamp uppercut. Come on, let's go here. We got a moonshot to launch. And stamp uppercut. Ouch. Ouch, Houston, we have liftoff. And that's it, that's the whole camp down. Let's go take care of the boss. Want to make sure you have enough FP left over to um, launch your doggies. And we have, we don't have enough, so let's refill. Get your doggies ready to go, the lone wolf ashes. And the procedure on the boss is we're just going to sneak up right behind him with the Lord Sworn's Greatsword, do a backstab, and then just launch the dogs, launch the wolves the wolves rather and roll away and let the wolves go to work on him and then you're just gonna hang in the background let the wolves hopefully finish him off if they don't you're gonna be ready with a mighty shot with your bow to finish him off he's gonna be like really weak at that point so let's just get in position it's probably a little late to move, make a move on him so wait for him to come back and then we'll sneak up right behind him Let's grab these in the meantime. Okay, here we go. Backstab, release the hounds, back off, and watch the fun. Lock on. Get right up his butt. Down he goes. Release the hounds and roll away. Roll away and let the guys, let the dogs go to work on him. 
In the meantime, you can bring up your bow. Get it ready. Keep the distance. And you can like ready a mighty shot. But just let the dogs do their work. They usually finish them off. Even if one dog dies, don't worry about it. And down it goes. It's that easy. And every time you finish off an enemy group, all your flasks get refilled. And that's that. That's the whole camp down. I think that calls her another Mr. Burns. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Alright, so we got that smoldering butterfly at that campfire. There's this another one over here. And let's pick up all the loot light that I left behind. What did you give up? A Lord's Sworn Straight Sword. And there's a Herba right here. That's important. Grab that. And the most important thing is... We just jump over this wall here. These stairs going down here. Oh yeah, and I forgot the flail too. Open this door. Open this chest. And inside you can get... A very important item. The Ash of War Storm Stomp and the Whetstone Knife. We can use the Whetstone Knife to apply Ashes of War to our weapons. Basically, you can change the skill on your weapons now using the Whetstone Knife. And I'm going to show you about that later. It's not applicable right now, but we now have that ability. And one final thing that I forgot to get, well, I didn't forget to get, I was just kind of like busy doing other stuff, is the Flail. This is a really important item in this cart right here. This will be the first weapon we have that has strike damage on it. Which is important because we can now use that in the Limgrave tunnels. Right here to wipe out all those miners. Alright? As you can see. Strike damage, not slash damage. Strike damage. That's important. Remember, loadout. Loadout, loadout. Always use the proper loadout. And that's this camp done. Let's just take a quick run around. Make sure we got all the goodies. Oh, we got a smithing stone out of the guy. That's random. Your mileage may vary. Uh -huh, I've kicked your ass. There's a mushroom. Huh, I didn't know that. Yeah, grab this mushroom. Mushrooms are good. Yeah. <laughs> That's not what you think. Huh. And there's another. Okay, that's it. Now, was that worth the price of admission or what? I want to thank you all very much for watching. And if you thought this video was really entertaining and more informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and post a comment. And I'll see you next time for some more Elden Ring. Hey guys, real walkthroughs like these are an endangered species here on YouTube. For a complete lowdown on the YouTube video game walkthrough scene, check out my Patreon page and please consider making a donation to yours truly, Major Slack, to help keep real walkthroughs alive on YouTube. You can donate as little as $1. That's $1, that's all. That's all it takes, alright? Thanks a lot, really appreciate it.